Today we're making a Moscow Mule Mead. Let's get started. So this recipe was created by my amazing Discord community. This is the Discord Mead series where my Discord community appoints one person to lead the recipe creation of a mead for me. So they basically make the recipe and then I create it. This is episode four and you can find the previous three on the channel. My Discord community appointed Brigadoon to be the leader of this brew and he decided to make a mead cocktail of sorts. They landed on creating a Moscow Mule mead recipe and I was stoked because I love Moscow Mules. For those of you who don't know what a Moscow Mule is, it is a mixed drink that features ginger beer, lime, and vodka. We want to make a mead that tastes like that, so let's see what they do. So they gave me a recipe to start with and I went out and bought my ingredients. The first step was to get our ginger base. I sort of followed my friend doing the most ginger juicing recipe method. I got quite a bit of ginger and I cut it up. I then put it into a blender and pureed it as much as I could. I did have to add some water to help it blend. I then strained that ginger in the water that was there through a fine mesh strainer. They also included some candied ginger in this recipe. I couldn't find any candied ginger so I used this crystallized ginger that I found. I chopped up a little bit of that and I threw all of those things into a container. We are using fireweed honey because it has a really fun and interesting spice character that can play well with this recipe. We are also using Kvike Voss and fermenting in the Oklahoma heat outside. Kvike Voss is an absolute beast. This brew fermented in the low 90s for a bulk of its fermentation. It required a lot of nutrition, but it finished in five days. The starting gravity was 1.060 and we finished at 1.000. After the primary, I let it set for a few more days and then we racked it to a new container and stabilized it with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite. We waited about 24 hours and then added about four limes worth of juice and one lime's zest. I didn't want to add the lime early on in the fermentation because it can affect the pH too much and too low of a pH can lead to some funky fermentation. By this point, the brew is only about eight days old. We then let that zest set for about 48 hours, and then we added our fireweed honey to back sweeten. The final gravity of this brew was about 1.012. We wanted to carbonate it, so we kegged it. I put it in my 1.6 gallon keg and force carbonated it for about three days at 30 PSI. I then went ahead and bottled a few bottles with my keg bottling wand and gave it to Brigadoon. This brew is very young, but I think you'll be surprised at how it tastes. So let's get to the tasting. Welcome Nick to um, the finale of the Discord Mead 4. Uh, you, sir, have, have um, Without spoiling too much, you've created something pretty great. <laughs> so, uh, thank you. <laughs> I, I am saying that because I've definitely tried it um, numerous times since mm. the uh, since shipping you and giving you a bottle. So, um, I feel confident in this. But we're going to go ahead and taste it. Um, like I said, I don't want to give too many spoilers. But we're, we're going to taste mine and yours because you also have created one. So I'm excited to get to try yours. And ours are virtually identical. Um, Should process. be. That's the idea. <laughs> yeah, hopefully so. We follow the same thing, so we'll see what happens. Um, I'm going to go ahead and crack them both open. Okay. See if I can show this. So I'm going to pour yours first, and I'm going to pour just a little bit because I got a surprise here for us. And here's mine. That they look color wise, they look super, super similar. I feel like these are almost the same color all right i think we're a little bit different on clarity but i don't know that that's the end of the world for us I, at least i don't think it is no. some people are going to fight me in the comments about that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i didn't i didn't do anything to clarify mine i don't i uh i kind of ended up just i think the first couple pours off my keg were uh, were a bit hazy um mm -hmm. but then it kind of cleared up as it cold crashed so mine pretty naturally cleared in that regard. All right. Well, how about this? Since you are the mastermind of this whole thing, let's start with yours. Okay. Um, yours is in my right hand. 
And uh, I do want to smell them. I'm curious, aroma wise, how close we were. Oh my gosh. Hmm. I feel like they're they're very close, but there is a difference. There's a little bit. I'm trying to find what it is. There's like a a rich fruitiness that like mine feels like a really bright that ginger is really bright and punchy i feel like your ears has a, a little bit of rich fruitiness maybe from your honey i don't know could be um it could be the um the fermentation temperature was slightly different mm -hmm. um, and we used um i don't know if you're gonna go to the ingredients yet but yeah no let's, let's talk about it i mean that's that's part of this process we okay. used uh boss kvac boss mm-hmm and uh, I mean, I, I fermented mine out in my heat. It was like 90 degrees most of the time when I was fermenting. So what, do you remember what yours was? Uh, I used the sous vide to uh, to ferment at a constant temperature and it was exactly 100. Oh, uh, so okay. I kept mine at. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mine was just outside, so it, it fluctuated. I mean, it went from 90 and then it bumped down to probably 75 at times. So mine went all over the place. Yeah. No, I mean, this they both smell great. The ginger's mm -hmm. super strong in both. I'm excited. Let's try yours. All right, let's go for it. Here we go. Ooh. Mm. This is, it's so, I, I, first of all, I love Moscow Mules. Whenever you guys had pitched the idea for Moscow Mule, I was like, secretly behind the scenes, like, I really hope they they like do this idea because I was super excited, but I didn't want to like tip my hand too much. <laughs> but when you guys decided on it, I was like, yes, this, the ginger side is not overwhelming. And there is, um, the honey gives like a little bit of warm floral side that like probably takes away the harshness of the ginger. And then the lime is like just a nice little zesting, a little bit more brightness without being overly bearing. Um, this is, yours is really good, man. It is. I think if I personally, for my taste, if I was going to do this again, I would make it a little less sweet. Oh yeah. But I, I kind of, I, I don't know. I, I think the sweetness level is fine because uh, ginger has such a prominent, strong flavor that like in the, the, the lime acidity, uh, I feel like you need a little sweetness, but that's not to say it wouldn't be good drier. Um, I kind of um, like it how it is, but who knows? No, maybe you're right. Cause um that really, I think that is where the aroma is coming from. Mm -hmm. Is the honey? Man, that's good. Um, and by the way, I, I have one fun fact people should know about this: using Kvike Voss, proper nutrition, all these things. How old is yours? Oh, at oh this boy, current how moment, old is it? <laughs> I can I can look when I started it. Yeah, it's I I, I know it's not very old. No, it's pretty. It's it's fresh off the presses, that's for sure. Um, I started it August second, and it is now August twenty second. So it's less than a month old. <laughs> yeah, we're we're twenty days. Which mine is the same way. Mine burned through fermentation, maybe five or seven days, and then threw in all my other stuff, sat for a few more days, and kegged it. And it was probably less than two weeks before it was in a keg, fully carbonated, you know, ready mm. to go. So. Yeah. And it's uh, my understanding is the most of the time you don't want the yeast, the flavors that the yeast give, but with Voss, like putting it under stress and putting it at high temperature, you actually want those flavors. And that's why it's so quick. Yeah, which is super. I mean, that's just a, another test, testament to the power of Kibaki yeast. So <laughs> I'm excited. Hey, let's switch over to mine. All right. So uh, same process. Let's do it. What do you get? I get more lime on yours, that's for sure. Uh-huh. I agree. It's definitely a little more lime heavy. There's less more... ginger and more lime. Yeah. And I don't know, I don't know that's... which I like more, like which layer. That's really good though. That's really refreshing. Mm-hmm. This is, I, f I feel this, yours is lighter and more refreshing. It could be carbonation. I feel like, um, that yours doesn't have nearly as much carbonation and it might just be the traveling and you know stuff like yeah. that it's can it can get sketchy but mm. i tell you what though they're both really good and they are different i guess like you know when you think of a a cocktail of sorts you can go 
different levels. Like if someone drinks, a, I love old fashions and you know, some people love an old fashioned that's maybe le has less simple syrup in it or less bitters, you know? So it's really just kind of hitting, if you're gonna make this recipe, hitting which side of a Moscow mule you wanna go. You wanna go more ginger heavy? Okay, dial back on your lime. Uh, if you want to go more lime heavy, okay, go just a smidge heavier on your on your lime. And mm -hmm. uh, I think you can really dial in this recipe to be catered for you. But as a at a base as a base value, it's super good. I am very impressed with what you guys have done. <laughs> I appreciate that. I mean, it was a team effort, that's for sure. But it was a lot of fun to put it together. Yeah, I mean, it is so cool. What I love about our community is this the Discord community, especially is that you guys have such a, um, almost said adventurous <laughs> side in brewing. And you, you know, when you get together, you just kind of create cool things. And I, I love this idea of being able to continue to emulate and create mead cocktails. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure there's a whole YouTube series you could create just on different mead cocktails. But yeah, I, I'm super impressed with this. And of course, as, as people know, I'm gonna put the recipe down in the description. I'll put it on screen and uh, and I encourage people to try it. I mean, this thing is super good. It does taste virtually the same as a Moscow Mule, minus maybe the spirit side. Mm -hmm. Unless you fortified this, you're not gonna have that, that the spirit side from it. Right. So. But it also, um, it's pretty easy to put mm -hmm. together and quick. That's, okay. as, as he mentioned, it was like, lightning fast turnaround on this so if you don't if you're not interested in waiting mm -hmm. you know four or five months like this might be up your alley yeah i will say and i say this about a lot of things that are kegged uh bottle carving this will really change the results because priming sugar is is nice and i you know i think people can you can do a lot of fun things with priming sugar but it's the back sweetening portion i think the, the fact that we back sweetened with honey and specifically fireweed. I don't know that you have to use fireweed in this. It just has a unique character, but honey provides such a warmth, sweetness, different taste that erythritol, stevia, non-fermentable sugars just can't emulate. So you could get close, but I feel like the, the honey back sweetening is what really takes this to the next level. I think that's what, that's what makes you, that's what lets you know that it's a mead and not just because you, I've done things with erythritol and bottle conditioning, and they're good, but sometimes you lose the honey in the weeds. Whereas yes. with back sweetening with honey, you really get the, the aroma and mm -hmm. like the honey taste, and that's like, yeah, it's a Moscow Mule, but it's also a mead, you know? Yeah, and that's so important. You know, you, at the end of the day, you go hand the glass of this to somebody. You want them to still harken back to some floral, some honey taste in there. You don't want it to just be. I don't want this to just be a Moscow mule. I can go make those, you know? I want this to be a Moscow mule mead. So, and I, I think I think you guys have done it and I'm impressed. Thank you very much. So, and thanks for thanks for having me on too. Oh, absolutely. But the best news, I mean I mean this was a lot of fun, but uh I want to make sure and, and share that Nick here is going to he's walking away with 50 bucks and I'm going to add a new layer to this world. Um, he's going to get his choice of my of my merch that I have in my store. I'm going to ship that to him. So uh, I'm going to be giving away that stuff. And Nick is also he's got a lot of power here. He's he's walking away with a lot of stuff. He's going to pick the next Discord mead leader. So within the week that this is posted, if you are curious and would like to be the leader of the next Discord Mead project where you help create the recipe, you kind of just lead the charge on it. You can hop in the Discord. We have a specific channel that in the Discord link is below and there will be a place for you to kind of, for lack of a better term, shoot your shot and say, hey, I want to I want to do that. I'd love to be the Discord leader. And within the week that we're posting this, Nick will choose somebody and we'll get to the Discord Mead number five. So I'm super excited. Every one of these we've made so far has been super good. And there's three others on the channel. If you're watching this and would like to see the other ones. Um, the last one we did was a, a lactomel using milk. I'm not going to spoil, but it wasn't terrible. So, <laughs> <laughs> but Nick, thank you so much for your, for your help and your, your leadership. And uh, I hope that I I'm planning on making more of this. I don't know about you, but this is going to be a new staple in my world. Awesome. Well, we'll see you next time, and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the Discord. Cheers. 
Cheers. Cheers.